So we're just getting ready for what is going to be an epic two days here in Morocco with Ducati. This is their new Desert X Rally. We're just getting prepped, just getting ready for two days of riding. We're going to camp tonight. Uh, apparently we're in some kind of bivouac, so that should be awesome. And we've got 90% of off-road riding. But I've ridden here in Morocco a few times before and really love it. I love the standard Desert X. It is pricey. The rally is coming in at just under 19,000. It is by no means a cheap middleweight 110 horsepower bike. But yeah, really looking forward to this and I'll keep you updated. Gridlock. Mm, which way are you going? I'm gonna go that way. There go. So we just kind of uh, packed up at the first foot location, done yeah a good few hours of mainly off-road riding uh, on the new Desert X Rally. Uh, first impressions, feels very much like the Desert X, so you've got the same dash, same rider modes, really easy to switch between the modes, very intuitive, very, very easy to use. So on the road, I was in touring mode and then flick between enduro and rally off-road. When you're in the enduro mode, it restricts the power, so you don't have the 110 horsepower. It pulls the power down a bit, and you get more rider aids, and that's what I started off in. It's kind of really pebbly a little bit when you go off-road. It's like riding on marbles in places, um, which is quite tricky. And then the rally mode, you get full power, you get no ABS on the rear, and then you can pull nice stand-up wheelies in second gear off the throttle, lovely. Now we're on the road section, so we're going to do some more road stuff, and I'll give you a bit of an update later. But so far, it's a huge thumbs up. We don't often, or I don't often, talk about like the, just the feeling of a bike. You know, the foot pegs are mega grippy and perfectly in the right position. The handlebars when I'm stood up, just perfect. The, the adjustability of the brake lever, the switch gear look and the kind of Dakar look of the dash and the overall look of the bike and the finish of the bike yes it's a premium price it's a premium product but it feels premium you know it doesn't feel like I've been shortchanged <laughs> Now normally when we do these videos, I start with all the technical details, but I'm gonna do it the flip way. I'm gonna start with this. This is probably one of the best adventure bikes I've ever ridden off-road. Now I've been doing this job 26 years, so that is a massive statement to make, but this is an incredible bike. Now the Desert X, I loved. Me and Chris rode that bike in Sardinia, and I thought that was a phenomenal bike. I rode it again in England many times, in Yorkshire where I live, and I've loved it. And then this is another stage. The riding we've had today is just incredible. I've got blisters on top of blisters. I'm covered in dust. I've fallen a few times, but what an epic day. To make me smile and enjoy riding bikes this much is down to this bike and how easy it is to ride off-road. It shouldn't be this easy to ride off-road, but it is. 220 kilogram off-road bike feels almost like an enduro bike. It's almost comical. When you get tired, you've got different rider modes that help you out. It is such a good bike to ride off-road. Oh, foot down. So we are, as you can tell, in proper Moroccan sand. 
lots of dunes. It's pretty good when you when you're on this stuff. It's quite hard packed, and it's quite nice to ride on. But then when you get into like the into the valleys where the sand has been sitting, it's like really soft, maybe one foot deep sand, which I am not a member of that fan club. Oh shit. I'm really struggling to think of the competition that's going to push this. Maybe the KTM's big adventure R, the 890, maybe the Norden that I rode in South Africa, that was really good. But this just feels something a little bit special. The suspension feels amazing. It's very expensive suspension, very sophisticated suspension, but it just feels amazing. So let me run you through some uh, details before I get too animated and too much carried away on my love for this bike. So basically Ducati have taken the Desert X, a few people raced the Desert X at Hertzberg and other places, and the modifications they made to race it, Ducati went, let's do that to the Desert X. So it's basically a race version of the Desert X. And if you're gonna race this bike, you want more travel on suspension, more ground clearance, more crash protection and better suspension. That's what they've done. It's not actually that difficult. So you've got bigger forks, as in they've gone from 46 to 48 mil. You've got 20 mil more of travel. There are closed cartridge forks from KYB, which I think is the first time anybody's done closed cartridge forks on a mass production bike. The shock is long, more travel again. We've got 20 mil more travel on suspension. We've got greater ground clearance. We've got a massive carbon fiber kind of plastic mix belly pan that really takes a bashing and then power and torque is exactly what it was before so it's the same tester stretter 110 horsepower engine the same one you find in the multistrada v2 the same one you find in the hypermotard there's never been anything wrong with the power and that's why they've kept it the rider aids are the same so you've got the sport which is full power touring drops the power a little bit urban and wet drops the power to 75 horsepower and then you've got a uh, rally and you've got enduro in enduro, you've got a little bit less power. In rally, you've got full power. And obviously all those rider aids change the traction control, the cornering ABS, the wheelie control, and the engine brake assist. And unlike other adventure bikes that you ride off-road, they stay lean sensitive. So you've got lean sensitive ABS off-road. You've got lean sensitive traction control off-road. And anybody who watches a lot of the bike wheel videos will know what it really grates me when you have to stop to change modes. The Ducati, you don't have to. Why can't everybody do that? So I'm in the sport mode now. I've turned a lot of the rider raids off. And these roads are proper. Um, and if I want to go to any other mode, it's quite simple. So let's try the Enduro. Close the throttle, they're in Enduro mode. And the TC is Enduro. The dash has changed, so the rev counter is across got clear gear position trip tells me on I'm enduro ABS and enduro traction I mean how simple is that I don't have to stop and reset anything or just pretty simple got a really nice big readout as well for the uh, tank range the big 20 litre tank on this there is an accessory where you can put more fuel on the back and make it look like a proper Dakar bike I think that's an extra nine litres and then if I want to flick it back, Enduro, let's go up to Sport, press that, close the throttle, Sport, different dash, that's bloody simple. I can ride along in wet mode with 75 horsepower, close the throttle, press two buttons, go to full power and we leave my heart content. I don't have to like stop and pull my ear and stand on one leg, it is simple and straightforward and easy to do. It's things like that that have really blown me away with that bike. I got on the bike this morning and it felt like my bike. I was familiar with the switch gear. I was familiar with the clocks. I could go through the rider modes. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The only little niggle is I've got a button for heated grips and it was cold this morning and there isn't any. That's an aftermarket. Then when we ride it on the road, it's got all the qualities of the Desert X. It doesn't really feel like an adventure bike. The suspension is really impressive. But 90% of our riding today has been in the dunes, off-road, hitting it fairly hard, doing some reasonably big jumps, and the suspension is phenomenal. It doesn't kick you out of the seat when you, when you try and jump it or you close the throttle over a hump. The forks take everything that you, that you can throw at it. I don't think anybody in my group has changed the suspension or complained about the suspension, which is testament to the KYB suspension that 
Ducati have opted with. It is a closed cartridge system and it is an expensive system. I mean, I was talking to the Ducati engineers earlier. I'll just run you through some of the suspension specs. So if you wanted to buy these forks, you go online, you're looking at about four and a half thousand euros. For the shock, you're looking at about 1,500 euros. It's an expensive bike, which is why the price is 18,995. That is expensive. There's no denying it's expensive but it's got that Ducati brand, that Ducati Kudos, that Ducati Coolness, that Ducati World Superbike winning and MotoGP winning brand. But it's, they haven't just said, well, wear this amazing brand so the price is here. They've said, wear this amazing brand, but here's some really quality stuff that goes on that bike. Here's some amazing rider aids. Here's some amazing suspension. Here's some uh, amazing brakes and rider aids. It just feels so good. I'm almost running out of superlatives, but there's a but, apart from the price. And that's this bit. That's 910 millimeters. That's big, especially when you're five foot six and a little bit. So as you can tell by my fellow colleague, Carl, is struggling with that tall seat height. I can't get two feet on the ground. It's like one or one fully flattened and the other one just about on the peg. Makes it awkward when you're trying to get the side stand up. That's a tall seat. The only bike I've ever ridden that's bigger than this was a BMW HP2 enduro i think it was in about 2008 which was 920. now this seat is you can throw this away and put the standard desert x low seat on which will drop it to 880 875 i think it is which is still a high seat a few times i've struggled riding off road because you can't get to the side stand and i have to like throw one i have to flick up the side stand throw one leg over and get riding but that's the compensation you've got to make for having such an amazing bike off road Sports bikes go really well around a racetrack, but they're uncomfortable because they were never designed to be comfortable. They were designed to go fast around a racetrack. This is amazing off-road because it was designed to be amazing off-road. So it's going to have loads of ground clearance, loads of travel and a tall seat. But if you want one of the best adventure bikes I've ever ridden, this is it. You're going to have to dig deep, spend £19,000 and see what it's all about. The big moment is when we get this bike in Wales with my best mate, Chris. He's going to absolutely love this, but he also loves the KTM 890R. He also loves the Norden. And he's going to be interested to see what he thinks of the Tiger 900. We've got a BMW F900. We've got a new Africa Twin. It's getting congested and it's going to be really interesting. But first impressions, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Ducati didn't need to do much to the standard Desert X to improve. They've just beefed it up. They've just given it an injection of steroids and fun. And it has improved its off-road capabilities. That is an impressive motorcycle. So as you can tell, we've had um, quite a bit of dust and mud today. It has been one of those days. And uh, apologies if the GoPro footage isn't brilliant, but the GoPro took a beating. But thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you sub uh, subscribe. If you've got any questions, we'll try and get back to them. Next time we see this bike, it will be in a group test with me and Chris.